Hello everybody, good morning. Uh, welcome to each one of you to our worship this morning. I hope you are keeping safe and well. Uh, I pray that uh, you stay safe and healthy uh, and continue to look out for each other. Uh, could I just ask one thing, please, each one of you who are watching, uh, especially to our uh, congregation, uh, do let me know or give us uh, a ring if you have anything to say, uh, good or bad, whatever uh, you uh, want to say, you feel like, uh, please let us know. And if you are in need, uh, especially let us know so that we can uh, see if uh, we are able to help in any way that we possibly can. So please don't hold back. Let us know your thoughts. Uh, give us your feedback, how we can uh, do things better uh, in terms of our worship. Uh, and any uh, concern that you have so that we together can build our congregation and make each other strong uh, physically and uh, emotionally and spiritually. So please uh, let us know. Uh, with that said, let us now turn our attention to worshiping God. Our call to worship is taken from the book of Psalms, uh, Psalm 71 first three verses. Heather Gray is going to read this passage for us. I have come to you for protection. Never let me be defeated. Because you are righteous, help me and rescue me. Listen to me and save me. Be my secure shelter and a strong fortress to protect me. You are my refuge and defence. Amen. Let us now worship God. Our first hymn is Mission Praise number 147. Fill your hearts with joy and gladness. We now bow our heads and pray. Let us pray together. 
Gracious and loving God, we thank you that you are our God and our creator. You created the whole universe out of love and the love that sustains the whole universe. We human beings are the pinnacle of your creation. And we are so thankful that you have created, created us to love you, to love you with all our hearts and with all our minds and with all our strength. Lord, we thank you that we have the opportunity every week to come together and offer our worship. Our sole purpose of creation is to glorify your name, to offer you our thankfulness. We are glad to be able to uh, come into your presence and to sing your praises, to hear your voice and to express our thoughts and our feelings to you. We know that you are our God, but more than that, you are our Father. And as children, we have every right to come before you and ask you to have mercy upon us. Show your love. We are aware that you have already shown us your love in such a way that you sent your only Son so that he can live our life, he can go through all the, the difficulties of life, the temptations that he faced. And so now he knows what we go through each day. He can relate to our concerns and our emotional and spiritual needs. So for his sake, Lord, we come before you this morning. And we ask you to look at us, not as we are, but as we are in Jesus Christ. And for his sake, forgive us all our wrongdoings, all the things that we have done or said or even thought. We know that you are a forgiving God. And because of your grace and mercy, you pardon all our wrongdoings when we come before you with humble heart and seek your pardon. And this morning, in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, we ask you to pardon us. Strengthen us that we can continue to look to you for help. Look to you for sustenance. Lord, we know that you can do far more than we can ask. And this morning, you hear the cries of our heart. Receive the words of praise from our lips. Bless us as we seek to bless you this morning. So Lord, let your spirit guide our thinking, guide our, our, our words and really take over the whole worship experience. Let your spirit guide the way you want us to go. And in Jesus Christ, we ask all this because he is our Savior and he is our Lord. In his name and for his sake, we ask this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us continue worshipping God and this time we sing Mission Praise number 331 in Heavenly Love Abiding. Let us join in worshipping God. No. 
and safe is such confiding, for nothing changes it. The storm may rage without me, my heart may shall turn me back. My shepherd is beside me, and nothing can I lack. His wisdom ever wakes. His sight is Pastures are before me, which yet I have not seen. Bright skies will soon be o'er me, where darkening clouds have been. My hope I can. Our reading this morning is taken from the Gospel according to Mark, Mark chapter 11, verses 27 to 33. Let us hear God's word together. They arrived once again in Jerusalem. As Jesus was walking in the temple, the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders came to him and asked him, what right do you have to do these things? Who gave you such right? Jesus answered them, I will ask you just one question, and if you give me an answer, I will tell you what right I have to do these things. Tell me, where did John's right to baptise come from? Was it from God or from human beings? They started to argue among themselves. What shall we say? If we answer from God, he will say, Why then did you not believe, John? But if we say from human beings, they were afraid of the people.
because everyone was convinced that John had been a prophet. So their answer to Jesus was, We don't know. Jesus said to them, Neither will I tell you then by what right I do these things. Amen. And just before we turn to our text and see what God has to say to us, we once again raise our voices and join in worshipping God. And this time we sing Mission Praise number 498, O God, our help in ages past. Our hope for years to come Our shelter from the stormy blast And our eternal home Under the shadow of thy throne Still may we dwell secure Sufficient is thine armor in order stood or earth received her frame from everlasting thou art God to endless years the same a thousand ages in thy sight are like an evening gone short as the that ends the night before the rising sun. O oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come. Be Thou our guide while life shall last, and our We have been uh, reading stories from uh, Mark's Gospel account. And in that account, we have seen Jesus working his miracles. He is showing his authority and rightful authority, unimpeded power to act. He shows his authority over nature, over sin, over sickness and even over death. So people we know have marveled over his authority and his teaching. Now Jesus had come to Jerusalem and as he came to Jerusalem for the last time before he was crucified, he went to the temple and saw people defiling God's house. So he really pushed people away. He was angry and he saw the money exchangers doing their business. So he pushed them out. And do you see these uh, groups of people? There are three groups of people who came to Christ. They came to Christ to attack him. These three groups actually uh, came from Sanhedrin, that's the kind of equivalent to our Supreme Court, and they had put together a delegation of three different groups, religious leadership, a political leadership, and leadership of the people, kind of uh, social leadership. And so they come to Jesus, and they want Jesus to confess something publicly, for which they can then accuse Jesus of blasphemy. So these three groups come and ask Jesus, say, where does your authority come from? They didn't come 
to us gently or they were not the seekers or seeking after the truth they came to actually trap Jesus why do they want to uh, trap Jesus because they know that Jesus is popular he is becoming more and more influential and his way of doing things were quite contrary to traditional ways of handling religious activities they ask Jesus by what authority are you doing these things or who gave you this authority to do these things you can't just do what you want what are your credentials show us some papers which seminary did you go to or who actually authorized you to walk into the temple and tear it apart by this they are asking actually you have no right to dismantle the system or religious system that we have set up their motivation however is not the right motivation their intention is evil they know what Jesus is going to say they want Jesus to say my authority is from God and if he says this publicly they can then condemn him as a blasphemer they don't want the true gospel or they are not looking for the truth as I said they simply want this particular answer to their query so they can take Jesus out and of course Jesus knew their intentions and his double command to uh, say you answer me is Jesus a firm challenge to these leaders Jesus says you tell me where did John's authority come from to baptize people now in reality these leaders should straight away say that his authority came from God but they don't want to say that the reason for that is that if they had said that John's authority came from God then by saying that they would have to accept Jesus as the Messiah and so they don't want to say that they don't want to say that John's authority comes from man because people knew that John was the true prophet of God and so they are in a real dilemma one thing they don't want to accept Jesus as the Messiah on the other hand they are afraid of people if they had said that John's authority was from man they are afraid of people because they want people's praises they want the best seat in public places they want the best chair in uh, public parties so they cannot afford to displease people and so if they displease people obviously their whole system will be dismantled or at least will be in danger of dismantling and so they came to trap Jesus and now they find themselves trapped it so happens when people come face to face with Jesus the incarnate Word of God they often find themselves in dilemma his authority is from God because he is the Word of God 
John in his gospel says, he is the word of God, the word became flesh. And so his authority is from God. In modern day, we uh, have the Bibles in our hands, the word of God. God's words not, is not a suggestion. It's not an idea or, or sharing a thought for a day or it is not a self self-help manual that people want to just go to a Bible to see what they can take out of uh, for themselves for that particular day or how can they uh, use it for uh, just having a, a kind of self-help uh, uh, book. It is the authoritative word of God which demands obedience which requires to come to it with humility and the church and those who preach the word their authority comes from this word now i am not the authority i don't have any authority my education gives me no authority my intellectual abilities don't give me any authority. My friendship circle gives me no authority, neither my position, job, or family history gives me any authority. The only reason I ever speak with authority is because I speak what has already been revealed. It is God's word. God's word is the authority and so the most important action that uh, can happen in the world is for people to hear the truth so if you who are watching hear the truth that Jesus is the Messiah he is the word of God he is the savior of the world then please don't let this opportunity go what is God saying to us in this bad situation? Perhaps God is saying to us to be more serious about him, to accept his sovereignty and to submit to him, to come and be part of church community. And because with that community and within that community, we can together worship and offer our lives to him as a living sacrifice. Maybe God is speaking to us through this bad time. And maybe he is asking us to really reflect on our life and what we have done wrong or what we have done good. Maybe a time of reflection. I don't know how God is speaking to you. But one thing is certain, God is speaking and is speaking to us, each and every one of us, differently. His message is the same, however, to submit to him. So, do we have question? If we do, bring it to Christ. But come with humility and with an attitude of seeking the truth. Be prepared for self-reflection. You know, when we come with question, we might face the dilemma. Because when the truth is revealed, then we would have to make a decision. And that could be a difficult decision. But don't put that decision off because of the fear of people like the leaders who came to Jesus. They couldn't confess the truth because they are afraid of people. And I would suggest the same thing. Don't, please don't put off the decision to accept the truth because we are afraid of losing something, whether it is, whether it is people or our, uh, uh, the authority or our control or whatever. I don't know. 
but don't let that decision go away. When we are asked to reflect and when we come to know the truth, let us confess it. Let us submit ourselves to Christ. Ask him to help us. Help us, Lord, to seek and find and respond to you in every experience of our lives. Help us to recognize your rightful authority and grant us humility to accept our failure and submit ourselves to your authority over all of our life. I think that's what God is saying to us. Are we ready to confess it and accept it and submit ourselves under his authority? May God enable us to do just that. Amen. Once again, we bow our heads and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word and the authority that it has. Lord, we know that we are not good in accepting authority. We find it hard to submit ourselves to any authority in these days. And yet, your word is right. It is truthful. And it does invite us to reflect on our lives and to confess the truth. We thank you for this morning's passage and thank you for Jesus and his boldness and his unrelenting love for you in speaking and doing what was right. So as your people we ask you to give us that kind of strength. Help us when we fail. Give us humility. Give us understanding. Lord we know that you have chosen us and not only to, to, to speak the truth, but also to pray for others. And this morning we pray for our brothers and sisters around the world who face persecution, who face difficulties to, to, to survive. Lord, have mercy. We pray for those organizations who are working to bring um, daily uh, provisions for those who physically struggle to, to live. We also pray for those organizations who along with these physical needs also trying to meet spiritual needs. Lord, we know it requires boldness, sacrifice and uh, financial aid. So we pray for those organizations and individuals who sacrificially give their time, talent to bring the word of God to those who have yet to hear. Or we pray for our own governments here who are working to make decisions. Lord, we ask you to give them wisdom and understanding, the sense of justice and fairness so that they make these decisions for the good of people. Help us to recognize your authority, that though they are in position, and yet ultimately they are accountable to you. We pray for medical staff and all other uh, uh, individuals who are uh, working in that field. We pray for doctors, nurses, uh, aid workers, ambulance uh, workers, uh, home, uh, people who are working in homes. Lord, keep them safe. Keep them motivated. Help them to be able to be available and continue to make a difference in our society. We pray for our own congregation, our church, a church who is struggling really financially because of the lockdown. Lord, we know that your work can continue even if we don't uh, stay part of it. And so, Lord, we pray that you miraculously provide for your people, both physically 
and spiritually. We pray for our own congregation. We know that we are not the strongest of the congregations, and yet we look to you. We look to you for help, look to you for ideas, and want to rely on you. Let your will be done for us. We pray for those in congregation who are weak, who are ill, who are emotionally drained. Lord, be with them. Continue to guard their hearts and their thoughts. We pray for those who grieve. Give them comfort and peace. Peace that is beyond all human understanding. We ask this all through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us now conclude our service this morning. Our service uh, uh, is concluded with this hymn, Mission Praise number 624, Take My Life and Let It Be.
And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the presence of the Holy Spirit continue to be with you now and forever. Amen.